Did you know you can make your own custom effects, transitions, and titles in DaVinci Resolve? Or maybe you saw an effect from somebody like Magic Animate and wanted to learn how to make one. Well, with the power of fusion, we can turn any graphic animation or effect into an effect on the end of page. There's four types of these effects. There's transitions, there's titles, there's generators, and then there's the standard effects. Titles are a physical clip on the timeline that actually generates some sort of text, effect, animation, or what have you for your video. Generators also create a clip on the timeline. These both can accept any sort of effect. It does not have to be specifically a title or a generator. You can have a generator and a title, or you can have a title and a generator. It just matters however you feel like it'll actually fit into that category. So if it has text in it, I don't know, put it in the title section. Both of them though put clips on the timeline. And with certain tricks, you can see what's below them. A transition is a fusion effect that actually merges two clips together. And an effect is what you can actually put directly onto a clip to affect just that one clip specifically. Now, all of these effects down to the actual basis is called a macro. Macros are essentially just a fusion effect that has custom controls that can be accessed from the edit page. With the power of DaVinci Resolve, we're able to take those new custom fusion nodes and display them in the inspector panel on the edit page. Now how to display it into these individual types like titles, generators, effects, and transitions, that has to do with how you package it and what folder you put it in when you're actually saving it as our packaged file. And we'll get to that soon. So a great way to start off with actually making, for example, a title effect, put a text plus clip from your effects panel titles onto your actual timeline, and then go into Fusion with this and customize this effect by hand. I have an example right here of just my text coming in and on the next curve. If I wanted to save this, for example, I could come into here, into the Fusion page. The template nodes are a special kind of macro inside of Fusion. If you just save this node out without changing anything, everything inside of this inspector panel will actually be shown on the edit page. That's why we can see we just have this one node in here, but if we go into the edit page here, we can still see all of these different pages. This template node trick actually works on any node in Fusion. You can do this on a background node, a text 3D node, a blur node, anything. And all of the controls and all the pages will be visible from the editor page. So to save this as a specific macro with only certain controls actually showing, I can rename this node to text one, for example, right click, and I'm gonna come up here to macro and create macro. I'm gonna give it a name of just sliced title. And then we're gonna make sure we have all of the inputs selected. The outputs are these squares on the nodes. So we see output here on text one, we are gonna to want to have that selected to actually that connects to the media out when we use this macro. So when we're saving a macro, we don't want to have the media out or media in, in, in any case, selected. We just want the nodes that actually contain the effect itself. The connecting to the media outs are gonna automatically happen. If we want the effect mask to also be visible, this one right here, so if we want this to have access in Fusion, we can give this a click and it will show up in Fusion as the new macro. We can collapse these other pages to get to the pages we want. Go into text that corresponds to this page right here here. Style text is our block of text right here. Grab font and style, that's these two. And then we're going to grab all four colors for the color selections. We're also going to grab the size, but not tracking because that's what we're animating in our effect. That's probably good enough. The only thing that we may want to grab is come on over here to layout and collect center. So we can have some simple center point for the user if they want to use it. We'll just come on up here to save and then save as. We'll put it in any folder that we want. I'm just gonna go into my documents folder and make a folder for this project. I just made a folder called title so I can know which one it is, even though it says title in the name. I wanna organize it out so I know what everything is. Let's go ahead and press save to actually save that to their folders. And now we can close this and now that it's saved. If we navigate to that folder real quick and open it up in Fusion, we can drag this dot setting file back into Fusion and it actually comes in as a node. And we can see we have the text, we have the font, we have the color, we have the size, and we have that center control, all the stuff that we told it to grab. And we can also see we have the output and the effect mask right here. Next up, the generator is its own clip on the timeline. And this is just one that I have created to save our generator. To save a generator from scratch, add a fusion composition to your timeline from effects, fusion composition right here, and then just drag it above some clips. This adds an empty fusion comp, which you can hop into fusion and add any note 
diodes you'd like. In this example, we're actually using a special method to see behind the fusion generator on this lower track, and we can actually affect this with, say, a transform node. Now, let's hop into fusion, and we can see we're using a media in and a transform node. In the media in, we are just putting media source to background so we can see behind this clip. And then the transform node is just animating the size to be a nice simple curve. So to save out this effect, for example, we're actually going to want to include the media in this time. I know before I said that we don't want to include media ends. This is only if this is an effect because effects will get the media in from the clip they're on. But for a generator, you'll want to include this media in. So in the nodes, it's going to know that you'll want to look behind the clip, not just at the clip. Once again, we can right click macro create macro and we can choose the output for our transform one so go to here to transform one we can see it's already selected and then we'll grab just pivot so we can change the pivot point of this animation we'll also grab the size control this time so that if the user wants to actually customize the animation for any reason they can but then besides that all we have to do is rename this to let's just say quick zoom and once again save as next up we have this pretty simple effect once again, we can see this is actually on the clip itself. If we hop into Fusion, we can actually take a look at this. This is the best way to actually make your own effects. We can see we have a media in one and we have a media out one. This media in is coming from the clip itself and the media out, of course, is what every Fusion Comp has. If we look at the glow node, we can see it's just at some certain settings and that's all that it's really doing. This is all that an effect needs to be. You don't have to have an animation or anything. It just needs to be some node doing something to a clip. We can then, of course, right click and macro create macro choose all your settings we are going to want the input and output selected for this effect because we want the input to be auto connected to our media in and we then want the output once again as always to be auto connected out to the media out we can then grab maybe the rgba but i think we'll just grab the glow size and glow as it's the only two controls i actually changed so we can see glow size right here because the name but then glow is way down here these are some hidden controls that are just in between here depending on whatever settings you may have selected. We can just give it a name for glowing, for example, and then just like the rest, we're going to save. For transitions, it's a little bit more difficult to actually get an example for making this from scratch. I have two clips that have a point that has the ability to have transitions on it. Come up here to video transitions and bring in your cross dissolve into these two. Right click on the transition, come down here to convert to fusion cross dissolve, and now you can actually access the fusion page and customize and view how a transition should be. So we can see media in one is the first clip and then media in two is the second clip. We can see the media in one goes into the background while the media in two goes into the foreground. And this cross dissolve is just a dissolve node that is dissolving with a transition anim curve on it. You can then go into this and remove these nodes and set up your own animation, which we've done right here. We just have a simple merge node, which is set up a little bit differently, but we can see it takes the first clip and swings it off to the right. It's set up differently because we want to move the first clip, but keep the second clip static, which puts it behind. So we're putting this clip in front and this clip behind, and then we're moving this clip with the merge. We can then right click once again, macro, create macro, and we can choose any of our inputs, which we just want the output, background and foreground, that's just fine. And I'm actually going to not select any of the controls. I think what we have is fine. We're gonna come into here to the name again and just put in, we'll just call it a smooth slide this time. Now. We have all of these folders with, a, with all of our different effects. How do we actually put these onto the edit page? Well, first, we actually are pretty close with these folders right here. We just need to put S's at the ends of each of these folders, and this is a great start. So I'm just gonna do this really quick. Now that we have that done, we just need to make a new folder and make it edit with capital E, and then we want to drag all these other folders we just changed the names of into edit. And this is the folder structure of a DRFX file. The effects folder, this is where all the effects will go. We have the generators folder where all the generators go. Titles, titles are gonna go there. We have transitions once again, where all the transitions go. We can also, inside of these folders, create other folders. So for example, I can put in my company name, Fusion Pixel Studio, and to drag this into there, and it will still register as an effect. Beyond that, we can also create, for example, pack names and put the effect into there. So now it's gonna show up over here in the actual effects panel. Into the drop down, we can see we have animations and effects. This is a folder, and then these are folders as well. Something else that we can do is actually grab a screenshot of these effects 
and use them as thumbnails for over here in the actual effects panel. So let's go into Fusion again, and what we can do is right click in our viewport, the one, the one we have active, and come down here to Save Image. Come into the folder that you have the setting file saved, click the actual setting file so that you can get the name, and then just change the dot setting to dot PNG. This makes it so that your image has the same name as the dot setting file, which tells Fusion and DaVinci Resolve, hey, this effect has this thumbnail. It does not matter the actual aspect ratio or size of the actual image. As long as you have an image in there with the same name, it's going to read it. I went ahead and put everything into the correct folders and also gave everything a nice image as well. So now to actually turn this into a DRFX, we just have to right click the edit folder, come down here to any zipping application or just regular old compression inside of Windows or Mac, come over here to add to archive or save or zip or whatever. And if you're using 7-zip, make sure you have the settings or something similar. Sometimes certain settings will not work. It has to be a certain type of compression. And then if you're using 7-zip, you can actually come in here and change the name before before you press save, we can just name it whatever we want. For example, we'll just say tutorials and we can actually put in our extension in here before we actually are done saving it. Before we're actually done, make this a .drfx so you don't have to have it as a .zip. Then we can go ahead and press OK and it's going to create our DRFX for us instead of us making the zip and then having to manually change the extension for us. Now what we have to do is double click the DRFX file and it's going to open up the installer in DaVinci. We'll just press in install and then wait for it to finish installing. You'll know it's uninstalling when your actual effects panel gets a refresh like this. I used to have controls here, now they're gone. We can then go through our panels and look for our name again. We'll just see Fusion Pixel Studios. We'll open up our drop down again and we'll find a new section called tutorial. We can see we have our image right here and our name right there and we can put this onto any of our effects and have that effect on there. We can see we have our effects over here in the effects panel on the inspector and we can adjust these settings just a little bit. We can see for all of these, this has worked out just fine. Nothing seems to have gone wrong for any of these. We can take any of them from any of our sections, look for our name, open the drop down and find tutorial, and then take our effect and drag it onto the timeline. And it works without any problems. Just like that. If you're still new to macros and this didn't make a whole lot of sense to you, go and watch this video right here where I actually go over how to learn more about macros and a lot more stuff. All about learning the basics and beginner introduction to macros. There's a lot more stuff coming for the beginners out there, so stay tuned. Or if you're a little more acquainted to macros, go and check out this video right here where I actually have a project from start to finish if you're ready for that. We go over all the basics and all the advanced stuff you can do with macros. This is the mega walkthrough. Go check it out. But that's going to be it for me. Happy animating.